all want to say a welcome and thank you very much and congratulations for joining Warrenwood Primary School. We're very excited to welcome you to our community. It's been a bit of a strange time, obviously, and a challenging time, but we've been very proud of our response as a community, as a learning community, in how we've met the student, our students' needs and, and our wider community needs and supported each other. We've been really, really fortunate to have, uh, as we always have, an amazing community who have been able to work with us um, and at all times have, have our young people at the forefront of all of our thoughts. The thing that I want to start with tonight is really about painting a picture around what education is and how we see education moving forward. It's not groundbreakingly new, this little video I would like to share with you, but the concept and the ideology of it is absolutely still relevant, never more so than what we've been in what we've been facing as a, as a world, I suppose, over the last um, eight months, nine months. So I'd just like to share with you, I'm going to share my screen with you now to share a, a little video, which will hopefully be thought provoking and have us all thinking about what the education of our newest little preps is going to be like, keeping in mind that where we start now, as in 2021 and where they'll be at the end of their primary school journey in 2028 and seven years after school will be the, the difference of um, their learning and their approaches will be far different than maybe what than what you recall from your experience at school so I'm just going to share this screen with you now and start tonight with a little video We'll get there eventually. Here we go. Excellent. So thank you. That was that little video has me thinking all the time. When I every time I see it, I think, wow, where where have we come from? Where are we going and what's next? And um I think it's never been more relevant than the scenario our teachers and students have been in this year. 
the way we've had to respond, work together, collaborate, problem solve, um, and find solutions, obviously, to problems that have presented that we would never have probably thought about even 12 months ago as a school, as learners, as teachers, as parents, especially in uh, the way that parents have needed to be an active part um, of the whole learning process between school and home. And essentially, it brings me to my main point is that when you join Warrenwood Primary School, we are talking about a genuine partnership. Um, a community that works together, communicates and trusts together. The one overriding factor that is embedded in evidence is the students are the ones that benefit. And that's what we're all about at Warren. We want our students to benefit the most, whether that be, as you saw in the video, with technology, whether that be with academic achievement, whether that be with social, emotional development and skills and intelligences, intelligences. Um, all of those things contribute to make a whole child. Um, and we know that different students have different skill sets, is interests, passions. And I think for many of you, when I've done a school tour, um, I've talked at length about finding each student's passion and using that as the, the conduit, the connector to other areas and other aspects of learning and development. So that's our mantra as a school. We want to make our students or support our students to help them have that internal drive to be lifelong learners. Hence, our motto at school is about creating lifelong learners. Um, tonight, we're joined by our prep team um, and my assistant principal, Suzanne Cott. And I'd like to welcome them and thank them for coming along tonight. And they're going to run the session. You don't have to listen to my boring voice the whole night. They're going to do a terrific job of engaging and informing you about starting school and um, making sure our youngest, newest community members and their mums and dads and families feel really connected and welcome in the journey of beginning primary school. For some of you, it'll be your first child. For some of you, you've got children already who have been at school, so you'll have some familiarity. Um, We've got lots of things we're going to talk about tonight to help you get a picture on um, how to have a successful start and how to have, be confident and comfortable about, about the steps that we take and how we work together as a community. So we've got Tash. I'll ask Tash to give a wave. <laughs> Thanks, Tash. We've got Liz, and Liz will hopefully pop up on screen at some point soon because she'll make a noise and... Hi, everyone. There we go. Thanks, Liz. Sorry, I didn't realise you wanted me to say something. Oh, yeah, no, that makes <laughs> you come up. Sorry, Dash. <laughs> We've got Anne Donahue. Hello. Lovely to see some familiar faces. Welcome. Oh, oh sorry, Anne. We've got Ash Franklin. Hi, everyone. And Ray's, Ray is a bit like Mr. Music tonight, and he's going to make sure <laughs> everything moves, uh, works smoothly with, uh, with Zoom. So thanks, Ray. And here's our learning specialist, at one of our learning specialists at school. So thanks, Ray. And no worries. So Shane, can I just jump in? There's just a couple of people who I've got their emails and I'm trying to put them into some um, uh, breakout rooms for later on, but their names sort of aren't matching up with their emails. Um, if you get a chance, if you could just jump into the chat and privately message um, me, just the email address um, that you've been sending through to Warrenwood so I can put you in the appropriate uh, breakout room, that would be fantastic. Fantastic. Well, good. Thanks, Ray. Good job. And we've got Suzanne Cott, who's our assistant principal at school and is someone that I know you'll have lots to do with um, over the process of transition, but then also in establishing next year. So, Suzanne, um, Hello night. everyone, nice to see you all. I don't, well, I don't see any familiar faces, but I'm sure I will know some of you. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Okay, enjoy the session. Yep. So I'm going to hand you over to Anne Donahue and the prep team, who will guide you through this evening, and then at a later point, we'll be breaking off into little groups, uh, breakout groups, so that we can have um, a smaller conversation and start building some relationships between the groups. Because obviously in this sort of setting, in this format, 
it's very much a lecture theatre sort of role. We wanted to really build some relationships and have some intimate conversations. So over to you, Anne. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Shane. And look, thank you, everybody, for, for getting on board tonight. It's a different forum, but look, it's exciting to see some faces and um, hopefully you'll, by the end of it, you'll feel really familiar with all of us. Shane's already introduced the team. At the moment, depending on numbers, we are hoping to have four prep grades, but we'll just see how things transpire in the next little while. So, you know, things may change as we are well aware of 2020, that things frequently do. So we'll just go with, with the way we are at the moment with four classes. Um, so thank you for deciding to send your child to Warrenwood Primary School. And we hope it's going to be a fulfilling, a happy, and best of all, we want them to be great learners. We want them to be um, risk takers and we want them to be great citizens um, once they leave our school. Some of the, um, tonight you'll, you'll get a brief rundown on things that we expect um, when your child starts school. We'll give you some insight into the expectations we have of you as parents and we'll give you some insight of the expectations we have of ourselves as teachers in making sure that your child starts their, their learning journey in a happy um, and positive one. Um, so thanks, Tash. I think we'll go on to slide two, please. So first things first, we thought we'd just discuss really briefly uh, some things you can do over the holidays to support the preps coming in for next year. It's always a good idea to visit the school, uh, have a walk around, get familiar um, with you know, where the prep rooms are, where the playground is, things like that. Hopefully, uh, if we're lucky, we'll have you in by the end of the year and, and we'll be able to show the kids. But if not, feel free to pop in and explore. Um, play dates as well, uh, even if they're just from the kids there with kin they've gone to kinder with, or when you have your coffee dates later on, uh, when we catch up via Zoom, um, you know, you might be able to make um, catch up dates with some of the other parents as well. Um, some good ideas are just checking that they're independent with their toileting. Uh, really, um, necessary things are like making sure they can zip their school bag, unzip their school bag, pack their bag, pull things out of their bag. Um, can they open up their snack boxes? Uh, because often we find, um, you know, parents might buy some of our, the new uh, plastics and, and containers trying to do the right thing, but actually the kids can't open them. So just making sure they have a bit of a practice with that as well is, is really good. Um, toileting, I mentioned, um, even how to tie their shoelaces. It's a good opportunity to have a go at that as well. Um, yeah, drink bottle as well, making sure they can open their drink bottle if they want to refill it. But over to you, Anne. Unmute in. We'll take two. During our transition sessions and at the beginning of next year, you'll notice that our classrooms will be set up um, with lots of hands-on activities and experiences, very similar to um, childcare or kindergarten. And we do this to help your child feel comfortable when they first enter the classroom um, and feel like it's similar surroundings to help them transition into school as easy as possible. And the activities are chosen with specific outcomes. And, um, and that's also so that we can observe and see what their thinking process is, maybe find gross motor skills, the way they interact with other students. So those activities really are very powerful in helping us to um, gain quick understanding of the child, your child's learning process. And we will be having different activities on the tables and they rotate around them each day. When creating the classes for next year, I think, um, again, because this has been such an interesting year and I know kindergarten teachers have not had a lot of time with the, the kindergarten with your child, um, we will form home groups but they will be fluid in that we're going to have a look at the students the first couple of weeks and we'll be doing assessing with them. Um, and during that time, if we feel that they might be best suited in a different cohort, 
on another prep class, then we will, um, of course, let you know um, using our understanding of their social skills and maybe their academic skills, what a best fit for them will be. So that will be a little bit different in 2021, allowing us time to um, gain insight into your child and to make sure that their home group is a good, is a good fit. Um, and again, we use the information from the kindergartens um, in order to, to first establish our, our classes. Um, by the end of the school orientation, um, each child will have met up with the specialist teachers. So they'll have done a little activity. They'll have had tours around the school. So they'll be familiar with where toilets and canteen, where the um, gym is, where the visual arts, where the performing arts. Um, so that, you know, it's not new to them, hopefully in 2021. And even if we can't get your child on site, then over the next transition sessions, you'll see um, we will be doing virtual, we'll be doing tours and the, the specialist teachers will be talking to your child. So again, we're making those connections. So let's have a look at um, transition dates. So we've got the first one is Wednesday, the 21st of October from 1.45 to 3.15. And again, we've, we're doing it through Zoom. Uh, it'll be a 20 minute chat with um, Liz, Natasha and myself at the moment. And we want your child to bring a soft toy to the Zoom meeting. Now we've got little groups organized and we will do three sessions that afternoon. So it'll be just a quick 20 minute show and tell, it might be a song and a story and share your, um, your soft toy. They will be currently in a cohort mainly from their kinder, so there's some connections with that first grouping. On Wednesday, the 4th of November, from 1.45 to 3.15 p.m., again, we'll have a 20-minute Zoom chat, and we will invite you through a WebEx meeting. The invites will go out tomorrow, um, and you just have to be ready and ready for that time. So the links will be all through the invite on WebEx. Um, the second session, there'll be a virtual school tour and storyboard opportunity to explore the classrooms and playgrounds at school. So again, we're trying to familiarise the students with Warrenwood Primary School as best we can. The third session will be Wednesday, the 18th of November, again, 1.45 to 3.15 p.m. via Zoom, 20 minute chats. Again, we're going to keep the same cohort um, together and they will meet the specialist teachers and um, try some activities online, which will be fun. So our Japanese teacher is Tanya Sensei. Our visual arts is Gina Metcalf. Our performing arts is Jacinta O'Leary and our physical educator is Dylan Sendeki. So they'll meet with those teachers on the third session. And our fourth session um, will be Tuesday the 8th of December. And that may be our final one. At the moment, we're still not sure. So we'll let you know or we may have another session on Monday, the 14th of December um, to be confirmed whether again, whether it would be on site and what it would look like. So I know there are some, a few um, things that we can't give details about, but look, I think we're all used to just going with the flow and taking it week by week. And I might just add in there, if we can go back one sec section there, Tash, if you wouldn't mind, I'll just clarify. Um, we're using Zoom tonight, everyone, because we're with adults. As a policy at school and with the Department of Education, we, we, when we're working with students, we use WebEx, and WebEx is our forum that we'll use. So when we send meeting links to work with or meet with students, we always use WebEx because the security settings are far higher as part of the Department of Education and Training um, purchase of the, of the license. When we're using Zoom, we only use that when we're going with it, working with adult to adult like tonight. Um, so that might make sense um, there about when you get a WebEx link, 
it's for that purpose to meet with the students when the teachers are meeting with the students online. Um, I might just clarify also, Anne, if you don't mind, um, we've got a little more information today, so it's last minute information. Um, we, with the changing of the restrictions and seeing what might happen, there is some potential for us to be able to have and, and expect to be able to have some on-site activity at school as part of our transition process. Um, we will build relationships through our online meetings and then with a bit of luck by the time we come to December, so effectively another, another five or six weeks away, we'll be in a position where I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to have something at school where the students will be able to come. Now, that may look initially as five students at a time to a classroom. Um, and we might have to have a special arrangement and timeline where the students can meet and mum can, or mum or dad or any caregiver can come along, one caregiver. Um, or it might look more traditional where the students are dropped off at the class and then mum and uh, everyone else uh, leaves for about an hour, an hour and a half and the students will participate in activities in the classroom, which is a more traditional transition type program. So um, we will know and we will let you know as soon as we know. So it's still a bit of an evolving floor um, and plan, but um, we will work within the department and government regulations to make sure our kids get the very best opportunity to start school. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, Shane. Thanks, Thanks Liz. On to Liz. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. All right, fast forward to the first day of school. So as you can see on our slide, we've popped it there for you, but of course Shane's recording, so we'll share this with you, all these dates and all these times, so you don't have to memorize them or, or rush to write them down. Um, the 29th of January is our first day of school, a Friday, um, 8.45 to 3.30. So um, it's a very exciting time, of course, but also a, ner a little nerve, nerve wracking time for some. So please know that we are here for you and your child every step of the way. Um, and this includes us, the teachers, Shane, of course, our principal, Suzanne, um, and all of our office staff are also amazing. So, um, yes, that's moving on to the next slide. Thank you. Prep assessment. So um, prep assessment is one hour assessment with the classroom teacher. So. Um, sorry, Tash, would you be able to just go on to the next slide because there's more information there. So um, our prep assessment schedule, um, so for the Thursday and Friday of both weeks two and three and Friday of week four, when your child is not required at school, the prep teachers will be conducting prep testing with each student. So on the first day of school, the 29th, you'll find a schedule in your, in your child's classroom and we ask that you just choose a time and a day and we'll remind you as you're dropping off that suits you to bring in your child for that hour so um, at the time you've selected you'll drop your child off um, at their classroom and there's no need for them to wear a school uniform although some of them love their uniform so much they just love coming in it so that's fine too um, and they complete a testing with us just one-on-one -on -one and it takes about an hour um, and obviously if you don't have a appointment for that day, you're not required um, to attend school. Thank you. I think there's one more slide on testing, Tash. Thanks. So they're the dates for you. And like I said, we'll share this with you so you can pop it all down. Um, and the assessment, so the assessment your child's undertaking is compulsory. So it's set by the department. But And so there's, there's no need to worry about, you know, preparing your child for this testing. You can't, there's nothing you need to do. Um, with them. Um, it's purely a test for, for the department, but also for us. It helps us determine your child's initial understandings in both literacy and numeracy. And we also do an auditory test as well. Um, and it will help guide our teaching so that we can organise our lessons um, to cater to each child's point of need. Thank you. All right, so the classroom where the magic happens. Um, all classrooms are open for business at 8.45. Um, getting your child to school by 8.45 will really give them enough time 
to help you and your child find their bag hook um, and get themselves organized um, and maybe settle them into an activity that is set up in their classroom ready for the day. Um, so the classrooms can be a very busy place in the mornings, but don't let that deter you from coming in and seeing what work your child has been doing or what activities we've got planned for the day, or just even having a quick chat with the classroom teacher. We love to say hello in the morning and at the end of the day and keep in touch with you all. So we're always on the same page um, with how your child is traveling at school. Um, also, if you need um, more time to chat with your child's teacher, um, we are always available to, um, you can book in a time that suits you and we can talk for a little bit longer um, about how we can help. That being said, uh, when is the right time to leave? to go. Um, the kids are really excited for their first day and we know you guys are really excited for their first day as well. Um, the separation from you in the morning can be happy and positive uh, or it can be emotional and incredibly exhausting experience both for you and for your child. So together we try and make sure that every morning is a positive one. And so be excited for them, be excited for their day, tell them that you love them, tell them that you'll see them after school, you know, if you're picking them up or whoever's picking them up and then go. So don't hang around and wait for the role or, or sit down and, um, you know, the, the key is as soon as you've said goodbye, just to head out and get out of there. Uh, if you start to feel a bit emotional, that's totally okay. And as we mentioned before, there's lots of teachers, there's uh, Shane, there's Suzanne, there's ladies at the office, they've got box of, boxes of tissues for you. Um, but we don't want the kids seeing you cry. Uh, that distresses them as well as you even more. <laughs> so we just try and say, you know, especially if you're gonna get emotional about it, just, just head out you know, duck out, come back in. Um, if, you know, if you forgot to say goodbye and you were just getting upset, but the minute that you have said goodbye, just leave them to it. Uh, and we promise they do settle in. Um, on the rare occasion that they don't, we'll always let you know. So there's no need to worry or mourning or anything like that. Um, it's trying to, basically trying to make um, your job easier um, to get them to school and leaving them safe and sound in their class with us. Uh, so, yeah, if you need to chat, chat outside with other parents and things like that, that's all good as well. Um, the harder it is for your child uh, to get used to not having you around and, and to say goodbye, um, you know, it, it will linger. So we just say, yeah, get in and get out. One of the things, Tash, we do try and do early on, depending on the scenario with how we are with COVID, but um, in, that, in those first couple of weeks, we try to have the coffee van as well, um, out of sight of the students, of course, so that it's, um, the prep kids are fine to settle into their classroom, but, but mums can, mums and dads and maybe grandmas can gather and have a coffee and, and have a chat and just share the journey um, out of sight, <laughs> which is a nice way of building community again with other parents. Thanks, Shane. What do you need to organise ready for the, the, the big week or the big year, I should say? A library bag, really important. And as you can see, um, DEET do give out library bags. Please make sure whatever your child brings to school is clearly labelled because, yes, they do leave them at their last activity and we're always hunting and they're hunting, so we need to have a clearly labelled um, items so they'll need a library bag they'll need an art smock and the art smocks that are plasticky are really the best because if they're doing wet or um watery activities you don't want their uniforms to get um damp so anything that's got sort of a, a plastic front is a great asset please clearly labeled um uniforms yes everything you, they wear can you have them labeled because at some, st at some stage, you know, they might take their shoes off because, I don't know, they're doing some sort of activity. So names on everything would really, really help. The hats are constantly being flung off hooks um, and we're hunting for them. So even if you write their names in several different spots, that's a great asset for us. 
So yes, clearly labelled is the best thing that we can ask for. Next slide, please, Tash. Every child needs to have a lunchbox and a drink bottle. Uh, really important that they stay hydrated. So we have uh, three different eating times through the day. So in prep, we have snack time, which will happen just before recess play. Then we have fruit time, uh, which, well, fresh fruit and fresh vegetable time when they come in from recess. And we do ask that it is fresh fruit or fresh vegetables. We don't let them eat yogurt and, and things like that at that time uh, and then we have lunch eating just before lunch play so we ask you to pack enough foods for those three meals now some people just like to pop it all in a lunch box other parents will send in their fruit snacks separate uh, we do talk to the kids about you know what's best to eat at recess and and eat at lunch and you know they can have a little bit of both uh, but you'll know your kids best um, we like to allow extra time for the kids uh, with eating as well, um, just until they get used to that routine because we have a lunch eating time, but we don't have a recess eating time. So we normally uh, start our recesses five, 10, 15 minutes earlier. Um, and we kind of dial that back as we get into the term as they get used to it. Um, sometimes two sandwiches is an easy solution. So they can have a sandwich for snack and a sandwich for lunch, then some extra goodies or a treat after each one. Um, they will get very hungry being at school and they'll also want to eat as quickly as possible so that they can go outside and play with their friends. Um, it's also really good for them if they're eating healthy foods. Uh, so easy food for them to eat, not too much packaging. Um, we've put some examples up there of just some, you know, good fresh um, snacks and, and different things that you can pop in, you know, from popcorn to beans and things like that. Um, but see how you go. We're happy to give you feedback um, on how your child's eating um, and fine tune things as, as the year goes on. You know, we find some kids won't, don't want to eat and they just want to rush off and play and we kind of have to get them to sit and eat and others will, will eat diligently before they head off to play. So uh, just keep us posted if they're not eating or um, if you're wondering if they're hungry, but usually we'll get in touch with you and let you know. Thanks, Tash. So Warrenwood Primary, we have a before and after school program called Their Care. Um, so they're fully accredited program, which have a breakfast club in the mornings and afternoon tea. So for those families who are interested, we've just popped up the um, phone number of Mandy, the coordinator, and also the, uh, the uh, website there so to find out a little bit more information. So um, we know that the kids just love going there. So it's never really a chore to send them off to after school care, but the after school care um, coordinators are beautiful and they really look after our preppies. They come up and collect them and bring them to our classrooms, especially the first couple of terms, just until they're really settled. And then most of them are happy to to go along themselves, but yeah. Um, so if you have any other questions, there's a, con there's a contact number there and, um, and, a, and a website there for more information. And Liz, the um, um, after school care with their care, they also yeah. do holiday care programs as well now. So that's available to families, no matter what, that's a reliable um, um, community um, resource to have that opportunity to have a guaranteed viable holiday care program. Definitely. Just be, before I begin what to expect, just a reminder that it's compulsory for all students to wear hats. So, you know, they can have the Legionnaire or the caps, terms one and term two up until May. So it's been extended and term four. So they must have um, a Sun Smart hat. Um, the other thing is we cannot apply sunscreen, but they're allowed to put it in on themselves. Um, if you'd like them to, they can use a, a little roll on one, that's fine. So, you know, that's, that's up to you whether you want them to put sunscreen on. If not, you can put it on before they come to school. So what to expect? All the above. So every child is different, but generally speaking, most children will be totally exhausted emotional when they first start school and that's us as well and probably you so if you can imagine for a moment how much learning they have to do each day they have to stay switched on um, there's a huge amount of stimulus they've 
trying to manage their emotion. So sometimes they're just dog tired. Sometimes they've nailed it and they're so happy and they're just buzzing and they can't settle down. Sometimes they just want to cry. Sometimes they just don't even know how they feel. But every day is different. And I suppose we've got to give them the time. Um, don't ask them how their day was as soon as they come through the gates because they'll go, we did nothing or they'll be over the top. Give them a little bit of time just to unwind, have a drink. Um, and then we find then they just start talking. And some kids don't even share until maybe a few days down the track. And as a parent, you think, oh, my goodness, my child's done nothing. They're not sharing with us. They have. And they just, they just express it when they're ready. So, you know, don't worry. Every little one's different. And they will unwind and they will share with you when they're ready. We've just got to give them the time. So um, I think... Some handy hints. Um, oh yeah, I think I just said we give stickers and cuddles, and um, you know we try and make it as ha a happy experience, and just hand them on to mum and dads if they're feeling a bit, a, a little bit overwhelmed. And often the overwhelmness might be the first day, they or a few days. Quite often we find they're really overwhelmed, maybe two, three weeks in, because they realise, uh oh this is what's happening every day. I have to go to school. And so, you know, we've had enough experience that, you know, we just have to take and look at each child and manage them through. So it's all okay. Um, I think we'll move on to some handy tips to help. Thanks, Ashley. Yep. So um, we've just got a couple of um, handy hints from us to you in regards to dealing with these, like the roller coaster of emotions that um, Anne was talking about. Um, it's from our experience that nothing beats a good night's sleep um, with a regular bedtime routine. Uh, we know that young children really respond well to routine. So, you know, a set time for their dinner, their bath, a story, and then um, getting to bed at a reasonable hour is something that we, we highly recommend. Um, the other one being that, particularly in the first term um, of their schooling, we recommend that um, not having any or um, having very little after school activities um, can just help them to settle into their um, schooling as um, it helps the child not to get too overtired um, as they're on the go all day at school. Um, and after school, it's just a great time to wind down um, with their family and just chill out at home with their favourite toy or doing a quiet activity that they enjoy doing at home. And um, the number one thing that, uh, or piece of advice we can give you as well is that we get a lot of times um, parents asking, why is my child so helpful and great for you at school? But they come home and they're cranky um, and they're just having... Um, they might have temper tantrums or they're just being unhelpful. Um, this is not an um, unusual um, behaviour at the start of school. Um, please just rem uh, remember that your child has um, been on their best behaviour all day at school. They've been making positive and sensible choices and putting 110% into their learning. So um, it is not out of the ordinary if, if some of their emotions and behaviour at home um, might reflect this because they're coming down from a, a busy day. It's all part of it. Thanks, Ash. Uh, just a couple of apps we thought we'd just let you guys know about. Um, once your child's enrolment number has, has come through and it's been processed, you'll be able to access Compass. So that's towards the start of school next year. Uh, might even be the first week of school. Um, we use Seesaw in um, the prep uh, area to share their learning with you. Um, so we will send home uh, an email with a QR code for you to log in. You'll just create, you just create an account and you can log into your child's account to see. And Quicker is another one that we use for those who haven't got other older children at Warrenwood, um, just for different payments as well through school. So that makes life a bit easier with the canteen and um, different things. So we like to just suggest that you get those downloaded before you start school and then you're ready to go. 
And the last thing we've just popped in there are some school readiness resources. So um, when Shane does share this with you, um, all of these um, images here are all, um, there's a link attached to all of those um, in the classroom. And we have our information evenings. We usually have a few um, pamphlets for you all to take away, but these are all just digital for you to access, given that we're doing this over Zoom tonight. Um, you should also have a Warrenwood booklet after enrolling. Um, and if you don't have one, I believe that you can access it on the website. Um, and if you're having trouble with that, just um, give the office a call and I'm sure, sure they can help you find that. Um, and we just suggest that you have a good read of that. Um, it's got lots of general information about the school um, and all of these little um, sort of school readiness resources um, give you lots of, um, you know, handy tips. And um, one of them sort of suggests, you know, where you could buy an art smock or a library bag if you're interested and just lots of little things um, to get you all ready. Thank you. I was just going to add in there, Liz, I, I think that Shane's sharing it via Zoom, not slides. So the okay. hyperlinks won't work, but we'll, we'll, we might put them on the website maybe, or we'll work out a place for you to get uh, access we can, to them. We can email them out to people. That'll be easier, I think. And that way I'll get that out to them tomorrow. So there'll be an email to everyone with all of those pamphlets in my, a digital copy. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Shane. Over to you, Shane. Excellent. And would you believe I've handballed this to Suzanne? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, as you can see and heard from our wonderful presentation, we are a team. And um, my role in the school is to work with all the teams and all the teams are fantastic and we work so well together and that's, I'm not making that up at all. It's just being genuine and um, we plan together and work together and our programs and curriculum are in alignment and our teachers just really work well together. Unfortunately, during COVID, we can't team teach, which is a real shame and that's a, something that's a, a focus in, of our school is, you know, teachers working together and getting the best from each other and the best from our students. But Hopefully next year we'll be able to go back to that because that's a, a just a great way of working and that's the only way that I've known. But um, it's a lifelong relationship and we're a team, not just as teachers, but with you as well as parents and um, we work together. And the newsletter is, um, Shane and I put a lot of time in the newsletter, don't we, Shane? <laughs> we do a lot of research and people say, but no one reads the newsletter and we say, well... That's unfortunate for them because we put a lot of articles in there that are educational or relevant to the school. And um, yes, our newsletter is very important and it's a way for you to get information about the school and what, what we're doing. Um, but if you're not sure about anything, please, you know, come and have a chat with us. We're always here. Um, and the office staff are terrific and they're another great team that I'm fortunate to work with as is Wendy. Wendy's our well-being um, first aid person and she's a great resource as well in our school that you can go to and have I skipped through a bit there Tash that you can go to and the teachers will put notices up on their window so in the classroom just um, notices about information but the communication pouch is also another great uh, resource that your child will come home with and there'll be information in those as well. Um, but as I said, if in doubt, please come and, and see someone if you're not sure. But we do work well together. We haven't been seeing parents much um, during COVID. We haven't seen them at all, really. So um, hopefully next year, as I say, next year, may change that, but um, we'll wait and see what happens. I might add Suzanne there, sorry, I can't help myself. I might just declare now everyone that my newsletter reports are sometimes a little bit long winded, but they sort of reflect the way I talk, I suppose, unfortunately. <laughs> but I hope the message oh, is always important. And Shane, don't uh, underestimate that. They're interesting newsletters. That's what I hope. <laughs> I'm hoping that, but um, the most important thing is that throughout the time of COVID, we haven't seen the parents physically, but the teachers have had significant engagement with parents mm. through 
um, WebEx sessions, uh, information and conversations. And I know that I can speak for teachers thousands of emails <laughs> in communication and conversation, the phone calls, emails, really important because of that relation, uh, relationship being so essential. I just had a really good question in the, um, in the chat, Suzanne, around... Yeah, I was going um, to ask you about their care. Yep, around yeah. uniform, actually. The question was around uniform and because kids grow so quickly, um, how, when should you order order uniform? And I, that's a really good question. Um, I, I think one of the things that can happen is I would be suggesting this year to order uniforms because I'm, because of supply and just with things being held up a little bit in the world, it might be useful just for having uniform ordered. Um, maybe don't buy as much and wait to the start of the year and then order a bit more because we just don't know as, as in the message that I got, how much kids grow over that period and little people grow so quickly, both emotionally, intellectually and physically, obviously very quickly. They, they're like sponges and they grow very quickly at this time. So definitely, yeah, lots of uniforms can be sold out. So I think getting in and getting uniforms ordered will be really, um, really important for getting them and having them ready. What I can say is in this unique environment, we do have some at school, a second-hand uniform bank that's building up and no one will be under any pressure with when we, they're out of our control. If there is something that happens within stock, supply and demand, that's what it is and we can't do anything about it. We're not going to sweat the small stuff. Um, it's really about the kids feeling comfortable and I, and I know that having a uniform is lovely but um, the orders can be made. And, uh, that'll be all in your communication packs um, with regards to PSW. So that's in Croydon, in Lusher Road. But I'll send tomorrow the uniform flyer as well in an electronic pack of flyers so that everyone has that as well, just to make it easy for everybody for accessing those. Of course, orders... They're really amazing. They're a wonderful supplier. They're open for much longer hours than we've ever had before. And they'll do what they can to make sure our kids, our students um, are set up for next year. Sorry, Suzanne. I was going to say there was a question about their care in um, January. Is that operating? Yep. The whole we have program. holiday care program in in January, there will be a holiday care program. It won't be over the little Christmas patch, but then it will start in the holidays in January. Okay, that was a question, that's good. Yeah, thanks. Do you want me to talk about Friends of Warrenwood? That'd be lovely. Okay. Well, Friends of Warrenwood are a wonderful um, committee of, of parents and, um, and staff on school council get involved as well and they're pretty much do a lot of fundraising and community building. So they um, work with the community and they offer, as Shane said, the coffee van. We love the coffee van when it comes because the teachers get to have one as well. And um, they organise all of those sorts of things and coordinate. We have trivia nights, which is terrific. And unfortunately this year hasn't been as much. We had a pie drive. We've got um, a Christmas drive with um, Gingerbread House. So uh, they do a whole lot of fundraising. We have colour runs. We do a whole lot of different things to raise money to, to go towards the school and resources for the school. So if you're interested, Friends of Warrenwood is a, a really nice place to start if you want to be involved in our school community to support our school. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much about Friends of Warrenwood. Okay. Thank you. Everyone's intention here is to do the very best they can to give their kids a great start to school. The teachers want that. You guys as parents want that. And I'm sure your kinder teachers want the same thing. I come across something in a professional learning program that I'm currently undertaking. And it was, it, it's not surprising, but the numbers, and I want to share my screen one more time, and then I promise I won't hold you much longer. But I do want to share this with you because it was something that really stood out to me. And I've just got to see where my 
screen is. It's not there now as an option. Um, oh, there, there it is. Sorry, everyone. I want to just share with you this little screenshot that I've taken. And it was around vocab because when we're looking, when we ask ourselves the question, what can we do to help our young people be successful in their learning, in their relationships and in life? This little graph came up for me and I'm just going to minimise my little grid that I've got here because it covers up part of the screen. But this little graph that I've got here shows exponentially the importance of good conversations and opportunity to be read to, to read and to share read with, with our students. If we have a look at the percentile ranks on standard scores, this is, um, this is all built around amazing. Sorry, Sharon, I think we can only see can only see. Yeah, we oh. can't see anything. Oh, it says I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, it's only part of the slideshow. Oh, that's... It's like a Word document, which it's has a slide. Slither. It's the slideshow, yeah. Well, that's strange. Um, okay, let's try again. Sorry. Oh, here it is. Sorry, everyone. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Thanks for getting yep. me straight. Good. When you, when you we have a look at this document, this is built on data from all over the world, collected and studied. Um, when we look at the results of students and the scores on standardised tests and success on standardised tests, the thing that connects and relates to students doing really well and being successful in their learning and their relationships is the opportunity to have conversations, having great vocabulary and having the opportunity to make connections to words and reading and comprehension. So the thing, the one thing you can do as a parent to support your young person to have a successful schooling experience is to engage them in great conversations at the dinner table, in the car, on walks, at home, but also to read with them and discuss words and discuss meanings, ask them why do they think that, um, how do they know that, all of those sorts of things, but read together, read to them and have them read to you. The power of literacy and, and reading comprehension is immense. If we have a look at this, it's quite scary. 1.3 minutes a day of reading exposes you to 106,000 words a year and it will help you be in the top or the, the, the 30th percentile. 4.6 minutes. So that's a sign, only what, two and a bit minutes extra a day significantly expands your vocabulary, your ability to be exposed to words, but then you're at 50% standard, standard. This is where it gets scary. Jumping to 10 minutes a day puts you in the 70th percentile. And when I was at school, I knew that if I got over 70%, I was getting a B back in the old days of school. And I was reasonably happy with that. But you can see the difference of 622,000 words a year exposed to, which kids can work with and explore and receive. And, and that receptive and expressive capacity is really important. At school, we have a process where we like students to read every day. We have um, uninterrupted reading time at every day as part of our literacy block. And we're aiming for kids to, or students to have our, in excess of 20 minutes a day. And when we see this data here, it really hits home to me and, I'm, and, I, and every teacher at school. And I'm hoping for everyone at home, the impact that it has on our students' expectations for success. It's quite clear that 20 minutes of exposure to language um, written language, verbal language, 
all of those sorts of things and talking about why do you know that or how do you know that is absolutely powerful. So tonight, the thing I want to leave you with is 20 minutes. 20 minutes a day to have a conversation and read to eat or have be read to. Let them make up the story. Look at the pictures and tell them what's happening and let them tell you what's happening. Let them do all those pre-literacy tasks. Let them explore. Read to them. Share, read, question and answer. All invaluable stuff. So that's what I want to leave, leave you with tonight because being a part of our community, we're very excited to have you and we can't wait to get to know you more and to get you know, to know you personally away from the screen, in face, in real, in real lifetime. But uh, we're very happy and privileged that you've chosen us to educate your children. And uh, we're very excited about that responsibility and we'll work really hard with you to make sure your children get a great experience.